Welcome to the Mom I Say Fit YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about different positions that you can do with an epidural so that you can still move to facilitate the labor process. So before we get into the video, head down to the comments below and comment what type of labor positions you want us to break down. You want us to explain how to do more of, whether you want more epidural labor positions, you want some unmedicated labor positions, or even upright laboring positions with an epidural. So comment below what you're hoping for us to do next. Hey, my name is Gina. I'm a perinatal fitness trainer and birth doula. I've been supporting births for about five years. And this is Roxanne, who's a labor and delivery nurse and student midwife. And we're going to be talking about different labor positions that you can do if you decide to get an epidural so that you can still move. So just because you have an epidural doesn't mean you should just lay flat on your back and just cross your fingers and hope that everything continues to progress. We can use these things called peanut balls and the labor beds are super modular. So you can even adjust the position of the bed to help with your different labor positions. If your baby is still high in the pelvis, so they still haven't engaged or entered into the pelvis, we wanna create more space in the pelvic inlet. And we can do that with a peanut ball by placing the peanut ball between the knees. And now this is gonna emphasize external rotation at the hip, which creates more space side to side in the top of the pelvis. And now you can just maintain this flex tip position where we have a bend in the hip. You'll lay about 20 to 30 minutes on this side and then your nurse or your partner can help you roll over to the other side for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then you would just kind of maintain this position until your baby has entered into the pelvis. Now, if you want a little bit more in this position, we can also find more of a posterior pelvic tilt or tucking the butt underneath by finding full hip extension. And so with full hip extension, we're not looking for like a really big arch in the back. We want to almost think like tucking our butt underneath and pushing our hips as forward as much as possible. Now, if you're having a hard time getting to this full extended position, your partner can reach underneath and kind of pull your hips forward. And this can help you find that full hip extension. And this is gonna tuck your sacrum underneath, which is gonna create more space front to back and the top of the pelvis. So the combination of the external rotation of the knees and the full hip extension is gonna create more space in the top of the pelvis to help your baby enter or engage into it. And this can be a helpful labor position if you have an epidural. Now, if your baby has entered or engaged into the pelvis and they're navigating through the mid pelvis, then we wanna be focusing on more asymmetrical or like rocking type motions. And so this movement is gonna be super helpful to add a lot of movement to your labor positions, even with an epidural. So you're gonna take the peanut ball and you're gonna line it all along one shin. So your entire lower leg is gonna be on top of the peanut ball and the peanut ball is gonna be running along the same length as your leg. Your back leg is gonna be behind you. You can kick it back if that's comfortable for you, almost as if you're trying to roll as much as you can onto your belly. Now, we know that you have a baby in there, so you're not gonna be flat on your belly, but trying to roll as much as you can to help create a little bit more space in the upper mid pelvis with this open hip position can be super helpful. So now if we wanna add some more movement to this position, when you have contractions, your partner can come and grab your lower leg, pull your leg forward so we have this open hip position, and then push your leg back so we have a more closed hip position. And so they're just gonna rock your leg back and forth throughout the duration of your contraction to add some movement. So this is almost like you're doing like a lunge during your labor, but you're gonna be laying on your side and you're gonna be in a more restorative position as your partner does a lot of the work for you. But this is gonna help to create that space through the mid pelvis to help your baby rotate through. Now, if your baby is getting really low in the bottom of your pelvis, your partner can help you with a supported hip shift. So to do the partner supported hip shift, you're gonna lay on your side and then your partner is gonna grab your leg and they're gonna bring their arm underneath yours and then just allow your leg to rest on their arm. So we're thinking like elbow crease is where like your calf is and their back of their knee crease is right around your forearm. From here, if I lift my elbow up, her leg is gonna find more internal hip rotation but if I lower it down, it's gonna find more external hip rotation. So I wanna find more of that internal hip rotation. Then I'm gonna bring the knee so it's aligned to the hip, placing my hand onto the knee. I'm going to just drive the hip straight back and we're gonna find this closed hip position. And I would essentially hold this throughout the duration of her contraction or if she was pushing, I would hold it for the duration of the push as she took her breaths and pushed however it felt good for her. So this is a great movement to do if your baby's still trying to finish their rotation underneath the pubic bone and you have an epidural and you need a little bit more support to create more space in the lower half of your pelvis. Now, if your baby's in the bottom of your pelvis and we wanna create more space in the bottom of the pelvis, we can grab this peanut ball again and we can put it between the ankles. 
This is gonna prompt more internal hip rotation, which creates more space side to side in the bottom of the pelvis. And then just finding a comfortable hip position for you. This could be a great position to do like in between pushes if your baby is really low and pretty much have finished their rotation underneath the pubic bone. So this may not be a position that you'll see super commonly during your labor because typically when your baby's that low, they're about to be born. So if you decide that you wanna get an epidural for your birth, know that you can still create space within your pelvis depending on where your baby is using different tools that are available to you. Typically in a hospital setting, there will be some sort of peanut ball available. They have them in all sorts of different sizes. If you don't have a peanut ball available, you can also use pillows as well. Just really anything to put between your knees or your ankles to create that different type of space and opening within the pelvis can be super beneficial. And if you wanna learn more epidural labor positions or even labor positions if you don't have an epidural, you can join our online childbirth education course where we share all sorts of labor positions that you can do that help to create different types of space within your pelvis. You'll learn what positions to do, when to do them, and how you can enhance those positions with your partner, plus tons of comfort techniques that you can feel more comfortable and move with more ease during your birth. You can check out our course on our website and use code YouTube10 to get 10% off all of our online courses and prenatal and postpartum fitness programs. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you get notified whenever we release new episodes, release one new workout video a week, and then one or two educational videos a week to help support you throughout your pregnancy, your birth, and beyond.